Good Day, the state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Murad Muradian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, Sweden supports continued cooperation between the EU and Armenia, Patrick Svensson. At present, we have 35 confirmed prisoners in Azerbaijan and the number of undeclared prisoners is 80. Harapparat, Armenian refugees and internally displaced persons from Azerbaijan, Ahijevan and Artsakh have issued an alarm. A glimpse of Andog in memory of Hazar Sarkisyan of the Royal and Krum lineage of the High Gazons. Let's support Western Armenia television. Murad Muradian was born in the city of Kirovakan. In the years 1970-1980, he studied at Kirovakan Secondary School No. 29 and graduated from there. During his school years, Murad was engaged in wrestling and learned to play various musical instruments. He collected information and pictures about the genocide against Armenians, national liberation movements of all times, and compiled albums. After completing school, he initially decided to go to Leningrad to enter the military medical academy and pursue his dream. However, However, he ultimately abandoned this declaration and obeyed the wishes of his family. From 1982 to 1984, he served as a soldier in the Soviet Army. In 1987, he was admitted to the Faculty of Pediatrics at Yerevan State Medical University. In 1988, Murad was a member of the initiating group of the Artsakh Movement at the Medical Institute. In 1990, along with several activities, he founded groups for the training of paradigmics and combat troops, and later his branch name, Pai In 1991, he became a member of the volunteer Black Guard unit called Nikol Duma, where he actively participated in self-defense and liberation battles in the border villages of the Republic of Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh until the ceasefire. In 1996, he was appointed deputy head of the military medical department of the Armenian Minister of Defense. On March 11, 1996, while performing official duties in the Tavos border region, he was tragically killed. On September 8, an auditorium at Yerevan State Medical University was named after the Dr. Freedom Fighter Murat. Muradian. Additionally, the secondary school in Silesia village of the Lore region in the Republic of Armenia was also named after him in honor of his memory and contributions. The invention of bread is considered one of the significant millstones in human civilization, after referred to as one of the fundamental developments. The concept of utilizing wild grains as a food source likely originated as early as the Middle Stone Age. Initially, raw grains were soaked in water to soften them, then ground and roasted before being incorporated into porridge and stews. With the advent of stone meals, baked bread became part of the human diet, taking the form of buns cooked on the hot stones or clay discs. Bread has been baked in Armenia since ancient times, archaeological excavations have revealed that the Armenian plateau served as the cradle of wet civilization, and Armenians were the first to cultivate wet between the 30s and 12th millennia BC. The Armenian people residing on the Armenian plateau were among the first to adopt a sedentary lifestyle and cultivate grains. Evidence of this can be found in rock paintings depicting plows and grains. The discoveries indicate that grain processing, including the initial processing of grains, took place in the Armenian highlights. During the Neolithic and Bronze Ages, Armenians were the primary participants in these activities. Wet was soaked in truss to produce grain, then boiled, dried, milled, and ground to make bulgar. Wild wet species have been found in the Shorbulakh wet field in Armenia, while only the Egyptian pyramid of Cheops, among the seven wonders of the ancient world, has survived. The Shorbulakh wet field, which is 5,000 years older than the pyramid, has preserved ancient grains. Sweden strongly supports the EU mission in Armenia and the implementation of the EU-Armenian Enhanced and Comprehensive Partnership Agreement. According to Armen Press, Sweden's ambassador to Armenia, Patrick Svensson, wrote about this on his Twitter maker blog, sharing a message from Armenian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Ani Badalian, in which Armenia highlighted the achievements recorded during the Swedish presidency of the Council of the European Union. The ambassador first thanked the Armenian Foreign Ministry spokesman for mentioning the important points of the EU-Armenian relations. Sweden strongly supports the EU mission in Armenia and the continuation of EU-Armenia cooperation, including the implementation of the Eastern Partnership and the EU-Armenia Comprehensive and Enhanced Partnership Agreement, the ambassador wrote. He also stressed that the bilateral cooperation between Sweden and Armenia remains strong. 
Siranur Sahakyan, the head of the Center for International Comparative Law and representative of the interest of Armenian prisoners of war in the international structures, spoke to the Herat Barak newspaper about the potential return of prisoners of war. In response to the question, he stated, there are ongoing negotiations, including at the level of foreign ministers mediated by different states. These negotiations primarily focus on resolving interstate political issues, but they inevitably touch upon the repatriation of prisoners since they are essentially held as hostages to exert pressure on the Armenian authorities regarding these political matters. On the other hand, we are aware that the Baku authorities organized an unsuccessful sabotage operation on the sovereign territory of the Republic of Armenia, resulting in the arrest of two saboteurs. It is evident that the Baku government seeks to extradite all the criminals and glorify them in their own country. Hence, at this stage, they may be interested in repatriating a limited number of prisoners of war in exchange for the two criminals. I believe this car on this matter are taking place, and with proper mediation, definitive solutions could be reached. However, I do not expect the return of all prisoners of war. According to Sahagyan, there are currently 35 confirmed prisoners of war in Baku, 26 of whom are from Khatabert Group. Additionally, there are 80 undeclared prisoners, and this number remains unchanged. On the occasion of the 200th day of the blockade of Artsakh, Armenian refugees and forcibly displaced persons from the Azerbaijan SSR, Nakhijevan and the Republic of Artsakh have sounded the alarm. The forcibly displaced persons statement reads, The Baku government is not only ignoring the cause of international structures to leave the blockade of Artsakh, including the UN International Court of Justice, the legally binding decision of February 22 that the Baku government must restore uninterrupted traffic along the Berzo Road, but is also continuing the practice of terrorizing the civilian population of Artsakh. A striking example of this is the four victims on the Armenian side two days ago. At the same time, Baku is also blatantly violating its own commitments, including paragraph 7 of the November 9, 2020 Tripartite Declaration, according to which displaced persons and refugees return to the territory of Artsakh and neighboring regions under UN supervision. As was the case decades ago, the Baku government continues its constant policy of the population's rooted threat and use of force from 1987 to 19. 1992, hundreds of thousands of Armenians were dispossessed and became refugees. Then, as a result of crimes committed against Armenians by the Baku Authority, genocidal action state sponsored programs. As a result of this policy, Armenian cultural heritage has been deliberately and criminally destroyed in Nakhijevan, once populated by Armenians, but now depopulated. Artsakh is also threatened by the example of Nakhijevan. Taking advantage of the international community's failure to condemn its crimes against Armenians and the absence of judicial inquiry, the Baku government has embarked on the implementation of anti-Armenian policies with even greater momentum. At present, the situation is extremely difficult. On the basis of the above, the refugees and forcibly displaced people demand that the international community, international organizations and partner states to develop and take effective measures to force the Baku authorities to leave the blockade of Artsakh and halt the humanitarian catastrophe and to implement the decision taken by the United Nations International Court of Justice to ensure the safe and unharmed existence of the remains of Armenian cultural heritage in the region under Baku's control to create the necessary conditions for Baku to compensate the lost and found of refugees and their descendants and to compel Baku to fulfill its obligation in parallel with the political processes to pursue with zeal the rapid and unimpeded resolution of humanitarian problems. An important and exceptional testimony by Ghazar Sarkisyan, descendant of the royal and priestly clans of the High Cousins from the time of the struggle waged by the courageous and indomitable people of Sasun and the Mashetsi people in 1915, when the people of Daron fought heroic battles of the self-defense for seven months almost unarmed. Broken by the unbearable pain of separation from his homeland, the young Hayurti commemorates the memory of millions of his loved ones. Years later, in 1939, in the magazine Taroni Artif, he publishes his reflective memoirs of those fateful years, presenting episodes of the heroic resistance of the freedom-loving Hayorti, the defender of Sassoon. The memories accompanied by a few photos were provided to us from personal archives by the author grandson, the same name Hazar Sarkisyan Kur Mihir Haikazun, highlighting the role of the Armenian mountains and, above all, the good advice of Andok Mountain for the Haikazuns as a place for the transmission of national education. The full article is available on our website. 
Western Armenian Television Church, to its principals and its viewers, continues its uninterrupted work with new approaches. As you already know, our television does not engage in self-promotion. It mainly broadcasts political and other contexts related to the history, present and future of Western Armenia, as well as information raising various issues. We also present the political transition of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, the government, the National Assembly and other structures in a transparent and accessible way. Dear compatriots, with your support, the possibilities of our television will be further expanded and strengthened. We are strong together. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song.